Objective, to determine the presence of cation or anons by a chemical reaction and to determine the presence of some cations and anons by an unknown salt. Background, solutions such as milk, coffee, tea, and orange juice contain an assortment of ions. In chemical reactions, these ions give a distinctive flame test, undergo color changes, or form a gas or insoluble solid. Your observations of the results of a test are the key to identifying those same ions as you test unknown solutions. After you look at the test that produces some change when a particular ion reacts, you will look for the same change in the unknown. If the test does not result in a change in the unknown, then the test is deemed negative. For testing of positive ions or cations, the presence of sodium, potassium, and calcium ions is determined by distinctive color that the ion gives in a flame test. For instance, when calcium ions react with ammonium oxalate, you'll produce a white precipitate. When ammonium ion is converted by ammonia, a distinctive odor is emitted and the fumes turn red litmus paper blue. Iron positive 3 is detected by the distinctive red color it gives with potassium thiocyanate. Test for negative ions or anons. When silver nitrate is added to the solution to be tested for anons, several insoluble salts form. However, when nitric acid is added to these precipitates, all the solids except silver chloride will dissolve. Phosphate ions react with ammonium molybate and form a yellow solid. When barium chloride is added to the solution containing sulfate, a precipitate forms barium sulfate. Barium may form insoluble salts with some other ion anons, but the addition of nitric acid dissolves all barium salts except for barium sulfate. The insoluble barium sulfate remains in the test tube after nitric acid is added. Carbonate anon is identified by adding hydrochloric acid, which produces bubbles of carbon dioxide gas. Writing the formula of your unknown salt. As you proceed, you will test known solutions that contain a particular ion. It is your job to determine what the ions are in each of the unknowns. Testing consumer products for some cations and anons. Consumer products contain many of the same ions that you will test for in the experiment. Once you've gone through the procedures and identified positive, ion, positive test results for cations and anons, and you've written out your formulas, then you'll be able to get to do this as well. You're gonna be applying the procedures you use on this lab onto testing consumer products. Safety. I cannot reiterate enough that you are starting to work with some stronger chemicals. So you need to wear your goggles. You need to be mindful of who's around you while you're working on this. Um, chemical hygiene should be at the highest because I want you to maintain safety. Okay, we're going to obtain um, unknown samples and we're going to keep them organized. And then we're going to obtain a well plate and we're going to place a sheet of paper under it. And you're going to use this to organize your test. So one of the first things we're going to do is we are going to be testing with a flame test our potassium chloride, our calcium chloride, and our sodium chloride. Okay. And We'll be working with strong acids again. You will have to also clean. So we've used nichrome wire before, and what we're gonna do is replace the nichrome wire into an acid. And so I'll have your dropper bottles for you. Yeah, it can it's gonna be hydrochloric acid. You're gonna clean those. And then You're gonna light up your Bunsen burner and you're gonna burn off the hydrochloric acid. Then, since you've already put your solutions into your well plates, so here I have potassium chloride, then I'm gonna take my clean nichrome wire 
and I'm gonna dip it into here and I'm gonna burn it. And I'm looking for a color change. And I'm gonna record that color change. And I know you've done this before, but just go ahead and refresh your mind on it. And then when you need to go to the next one, again, you grab your acid and you're gonna clean your nichrome wire. Don't leave it in here. And then burn it off again and test your next known. If I have time, I'll put some popsicle sticks available and I'll make those solutions of the sodium chloride, calcium chloride, and potassium chloride. And I'll have those popsicle sticks uh, soaking overnight for you. Otherwise, you're gonna use a nichrome wire. Once you've tested your three knowns and record their flame tests, then you will test your unknown samples by repeating steps three or four depending on if we have nichrome wire or popsicle stick. We're gonna place two milliliters of calcium chloride into the first test tube. Now, two milliliters is basically a pipette's worth. So just do a pipette and you're good. And I went ahead and I placed substance A in the second one, substance B in the third, and C in the fourth. So I have calcium chloride, and then substance A, B, and C. Okay, that being done, uh, my next step will be to add 15 drops of ammonium oxalate to each one of these. So, So we see, uh, we see some white precipitate forming. Okay. Um, we're looking for a white cloudy precipitate. Now, you have to have a little patience on this because if the solution remains clear after about a minute, then you're gonna place it into a warm water bath for five minutes. And then you're gonna look for precipitate again. We are looking for this cloudiness that we see with the calcium. Okay. Testing for ammonium ion. I've placed two milliliters of the ammonium chloride in the first one, and then my substance A, B, and C. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add sodium hydroxide into the test tubes. And it says about 15 drops. So here we go. Okay out of that and then it says to waft so you're going to waft your test tubes and you're looking for the smell of ammonia and if you think that you have that then you're going to use a red litmus paper and you can moisten the red litmus paper and basically you're going to stick it into the test tube and we're looking for a color change to occur. If it goes blue, that means that we have ammonia present. Now, I see a little bit of a blue change, but not quite enough to make that assumption. So, it mentions that I can place it into a warm water bath and then check it again, because a warm water bath will help make that smell if it's there more present. All right, now we're gonna test for ferric ion or iron ion. So I've placed iron chloride in the first one in our substance A, B, and C. Again, a squirt's worth. So it says to place five drops of nitric acid into each of the test tubes. And once you have that, then we're gonna place in some potassium thiocyanate. And I only need about two or three drops of this. And that bright red that you saw in that first test tube is what we're looking for. And 
record all observations that you have. And a faint peak color is not a positive test. I have to have this reddish color for this. Testing for chloride ions. We're gonna place two milliliters of sodium chloride in the first, and then our mystery substance right behind it. And then we are gonna place five to 10 drops of silver nitrate into each one. So we've got some color changes here. And then we are gonna place in some nitric acid. And then we're gonna to have to stir it. And any Anything that remains, these chunks that remain after we stir it, that is silver chloride. And that tells us that we have a chloride in our solution. This time we'll be testing for sodium phosphate. And we have sodium phosphate in the first one and our three unknowns. And then we are gonna use um, nitric acid again. Or hydrochloric acid and I'm gonna place some drops into each one and then what we're gonna to have to do is we have to place this into a warm bath no warmer than 60 degrees and then once you have that done you're gonna add ammonium molybate to it now we placed our sodium carbonate into the first test tube along with our mysteries and then we're going to add hydrochloric acid to each one of these and we are looking for bubbles. some there and record your results. So when you get done, make sure you dispose of everything properly. And then the final thing you have to do is you have to figure out what the chemical formula of each one of these substances are. Make sure that you use your evidence from your lab to justify what you believe. Great job, live long and prosper.